This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and welcome to the first episode of The Naughty Bucket Chronicles. If you follow my channel, you are almost certainly familiar with Bosnian Bill, his excellent YouTube channel, and his infamous Naughty Bucket. That's where Bill keeps the locks that have thus far resisted his picking efforts. Now, Bill was gracious enough to host me in the lock lab a few days ago, and he allowed me to take my pick of the locks in the Naughty Bucket for me to try out. So this is the first of what I ambitiously hope will be a series of videos in which I try my hand at some of the naughtiest locks around. The first lock we have is this Mauer NW4 Euro Profile Cylinder. Now this lock has a really intimidating key. You can see there are several dimples along this side, then we have a winding track which sets four sliders, and there's also an interactive element which is pressed up by a detent inside of the lock, which in turn sets the pin in this chamber above the top of the keyway. I should note that interactive elements are great for key control, that is preventing unauthorized copies, but to a picker, it's a little bit like the free spot on a bingo card. You always know that the first chamber of a lock like this will be set really high, and because of that, it makes picking a little bit easier. Finally, we also have some dimples on the edge of the key. However, I am relatively certain that those are passive pins, so we don't need to worry about them while picking. So, without further ado, let's put this in the vise and see if we can evict this lock permanently from the naughty bucket. Okay, we've got it in the vise. Let's make sure it's still rotating. Okay, let's get some tension in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is push all of the sliders to the right. I do that to get them out of the way of the dimple pins and also to make sure when I'm picking, hopefully I'll only have to push them in one direction. Now that we have them slid over, Let's get to picking on these dimples. Nothing on one, nothing on two. Number three is binding, got a nice click there. Click out of four, nothing on five or six. Back to the beginning. Number one is binding tightly. Remember that's with the interactive element, so it's set very high. There we go, click out of him, and I felt a good bit of movement on the core, which may mean that we're done with the pins for now, but let's check them all. Two, three, four, five, six. Nothing is binding, so let me get my little sparrows hook again and try to set these sliders. Nothing on one, nothing on two, click out of three, Four doesn't feel like it's moving. Let's go back to the beginning. Little click on one. Click out of two and a little bit more movement on the core. That may mean that all of the sliders are set. So let's go back to the pins. We still have a little bit more work to do there. One, two, click out of three and we got it open. Okay, let's take this apart and we will see what's inside. Okay, the first thing we have to do while disassembling this is to remove a small roll pin that goes in between the two halves of the cam. And to do that, I'm going to get a small piece of steel wire and try to tap that pin out lightly. There we go, got the pin out, and that should allow the two halves of the cam to fall apart. But first, let's get my pinning tray over here so I don't lose any parts. There we go. Now I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to try to disassemble this, only taking one half apart. Doesn't always work, but maybe we'll get lucky today. Okay, I have a pinning shoe in, which should stop the pins from dropping down. 
And I'm going to slide this out the front, hoping I don't lose anything in the process. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is try to drop all of the passive pins out. And I just lost a slider. That's number one slider. Maybe they're what we need to get out first. Actually, I should say that's the number four slider. Number three, two, and one. Now let's try to get those passive pins out. They don't appear to want to come out. Let me get a pick to push on them. Okay, I think our standard key pins are in the way of me pushing them out, so I guess we're going to drop them out first. And they, of course, are also giving me trouble. There must be some oil in here or something. Push them out as high as I can. Maybe we can get them out using tweezers. Okay, key pin number six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's take one more shot at these side pins. There we go, I can get to them easily now. Okay, let's arrange all of these and then we'll try to get the driver pins out. Okay, the first driver pin is a standard. And that spring doesn't appear to want to come out. We have a modified standard pin. Looks like it could be an anti-bump pin. That spring is coming out. Next pin is standard. Standard, oh no, that is a modified standard. In fact, all of these are now that I'm looking at them. Looks like T-pins with really short ends on them. I'll give you a zoom in on these in just a moment. We have a spool in slot five. And slot six, there we go. The cam is in the way of slot six. Let's see if I can, there we go, another spool. And that spring of course is giving me trouble. There we go. Okay, looks like all of the springs are the same. So let me give you a close up of all of this.
Okay, for all of the key pins, you can see they are standard. However, there is a notch in each of them. If we look over at the core, I suspect we'll find little ledges. And yes, there they are. Those ledges prevent those key pins from dropping too far down into the chamber. It's actually something not uncommon on dimple locks. Then for our driver pins, we have a standard in slot one, modified standards in slots two, three, and four, and spools in slots five and six. Then we can see our sliders up top. You can see they are just essentially wafers. There's no sidebar that, that interacts with them. So you just have to push them out of the way until they no longer block the movement of the core. Over in slot seven, we have our passive pins. And finally, let's take a look at this core. We have those ledges I mentioned before. Then we have some drill protection in front of the, the pin stack. A lot of drill protection there on the side. It looks like above and below the keyway, also next to it. The holes for the passive pins, the holes for the sliders. Then we have some detents on the bottom. This large detent is for the interactive element. Then we have three detents for keeping the sliders in place. Frankly, I'm not sure why they don't have a fourth detent for that back slider. Then keep moving around. I think that's about it. So that's all I have for you today. Bill, thank you very much for allowing me to raid the naughty bucket. To everyone else, if you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.